Senator Scott Jensen, Dr. Scott Jensen. You want to be senator or doctor or senator doctor or doctor senator? Which one would you like to be, Scott? Well, let's go with doctor today. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go with doctor today. Uh, senator Scott Jensen, Dr. Scott Jensen, uh, representing state, uh, Senate District 47 communities in Carver County. And pretty much, I love the fact that uh, you and Melissa Franzen kind of, have you known one another for, for some time? We just met two years ago when I was elected in 2016, and she's been a, a real straightforward person to work with. So uh, it's, it's been a, a lot of fun hearing what she has to say, what her initiatives are. So it's just it's been a two-year relationship. So you're a doctor. What? Uh, I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. I don't know if you listen to the show or not, but I uh, three months ago was put on medical cannabis, and it's calmed me down quite a bit. I'm actually sleeping for the first time in a long, long time, and it's it's terrific. It's wonderful. Um, so I'm kind of an advocate. I guess I've come kind of become the poster boy for cannabis in the state of Minnesota, which I don't know if Toots, my mother, would like. But, you know, it's great stuff. It really, really helps people. Do, do you think the average person knows how much it can help people? Well, I think we're sort of stuck. I think the average person is skeptical. And I think part of that's because people over the age of 50 were sort of we're sort of locked into our perspective of what marijuana was in the 1960s and Woodstock. Right. And I think that uh, if you go back to then, I mean, we weren't doing opiates like we are in the world of medicine and pharmaceuticals. Right. So I think I oftentimes use the phrase, we can't know what we don't know. And the only way we can pierce that bubble is to roll up our sleeves and try to learn more. And to me, that's sort of what you're doing when you come out and you say, hey, you know, I tried some THC, and it has helped me. And I think we're mm-hmm. finding that more and more. The fact of the matter is we've literally blown open the doors in terms of which medical diagnoses allow a person to be eligible for medical marijuana. Many of the days I see patients, uh, more than 50% of the patients I see are actually eligible because uh, the diagnostic uh, considerations have been so broadened. Yeah, which is a really, really good thing. Look, I, I made very, very clear to Senator Franzen yesterday that I don't agree with uh smoking pot in public because it does have a noxious odor to a lot of people. So, you you know, if you want to go with an edible or a capsule, that's your business. But the smoke thing is going to bother some people. So I, I would maybe, I don't know how you could incorporate that to not to, to not smoke it in public. You can do it at your home, but probably not in public. But well, um, we can do the same thing we did with the clean air law in regards good, to Good, good. So that's a really good start. I want to hear about it. So what? which law so are we be- talking about? You know, if we've got prohibitions on tobacco in the workplace or at restaurants or here, right. there, or wherever we have those kind of prohibitions in, with tobacco, we're certainly, we would certainly have them with uh, smoking uh, uh, marijuana. But I think, uh, yeah. that's why I think Senator Franzen's bill is, is it's appropriate now. We need to be talking about all these things because at some level we could say that the ship has already sailed when – you have two political organizations gain major party status in the November election three months ago, both on the same issue, and you see surrounding states starting to say, yep, we're going to legalize it. This is a time for the legislature to get out in front on this issue, learn about it, uh, and again, try to understand what it is that we don't know. I think it's a wonderful thing because I, you know, I, I, I did uh, smoke a little marijuana when I was 16 years old, 17, maybe whatever it is, and hadn't since uh, much the the edible thing. We wanted to. It's been legal in Vegas now for what two years? Recreational uh, cannabis. Yeah, but in California, it's been 20 years. Man, it's been <laughs> 20 years, God. But you know, so I did. I tried some edibles out in out in Vegas a couple of years ago and found them to be very pleasant. That's what got my wife started. My wife's the one that actually reached out to Dr. Merman and said, oh, "Look, my my husband needs help with this." And Dr. Merman stepped up, and everybody else, Dr. Beal, and all these people. Uh, it's it's really improved my life, and I think it's helped the show because I'm nowhere near as big a jerk as I used to be. So that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. Thank I, I, you, I Senator. I have to confess, I don't listen to a lot of radio. Usually when I'm in the car, I just love the peace and quiet, but I certainly appreciate your candor. Well, it's true. I mean, it, it has helped me uh, with, look, when you don't get any sleep, you're going to be a crab ass. There's no doubt about it. And I didn't for, for decades. But um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I would say this. Do not uh, do recreational cannabis and then drive. That's not going to be a smart idea. Just with al- like with alcohol or opiates or anything else, don't do it and drive. That's a whole different situation. But um, I just I don't. I don't see a lot. The one thing I would tell people uh, with recreational cannabis is if you're going to do that first 10 milligrams, then let it set in. Do not do another 10 because you're not going to like it. I'm just telling you, you get you have to be patient and wait an hour, maybe a couple of hours for some people for it to even take effect. Right. That's exactly right. And I I think that's that's part of what we need to do if we're going to move forward. We need to help people understand uh, in the same way that they learn how to, you know, when a person is 21, when they start to learn how to, how alcohol affects them, how long it lasts, how it impairs them, we do the mm-hmm. same thing with lots of things. We do it with tobacco. We do it with alcohol. Quite frankly, we even do it with exercise. Uh, once a oh, person yeah. has a heart attack, we're frequently putting them into a cardiac rehab unit so they can learn. Now that they have a new normal, now their heart has had a heart attack. They've lost a little heart muscle. We have to reteach them. You need to learn how your body's going to react. Your heart rate might go up faster than it did before. You might break into a sweat quicker. This isn't uncommon for humans. We have to accept that we're dynamic creatures, and we have to learn how our body responds. Now, Doctor, I have to tell you something. After talking to Senator Franzen yesterday and talking to you today, I'm talking to two politicians who are pleasant. How did that happen? Well, I think it's because I'm Norwegian, and it must have been the water I drank when I was a child oh, and sleepy. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what it was. Okay. But, no, I, we should point out, by the way, that uh, Dr. Jensen is a Republican and Melissa Franzen is a Democrat. She, she, I, I have a sneaking suspicion you're pretty much a centrist, too, kind of sounds like it, which I really admire. I consider myself to be a centrist. And I think more people like you and Melissa need to step up and, and let people know that that's a good position to be in. I think it's wonderful. I love what uh, Ronald Reagan said when he said, if, if you've got someone that you disagree with uh, 20% of the time, you don't have a 20% enemy, you've got an ally. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think there's an awful lot of us, Tom, that 80% that, that see the, you know, we can agree on 80% of the issues probably pretty easily. So I, I don't understand why politicians are drawing lines in the sand. I certainly right. understand the fear. I think once you get into politics, all of a sudden uh, there's, there's a tendency to sort of participate in revenge politics where, you know, do whatever you can to pimp the other side. Worry yep. about your next election. Yep. Try to make the next election difficult for, uh, for the other side of the aisle. I don't buy into that. I think it really compromises the quality of work we could be doing. If we get elected, we should take the term that we got elected to, do as much as we can, be as thoughtful as we can. And if the people say, we don't want you back anymore, that's cool. Go back to your community and do what you did before you got elected. Yeah, that's a good thing. By the way, you are the very, very first Scandinavian I've ever ever heard use the word pimp. I just want you to know that. (laughs) Thank you. You know, if I can say one other thing, Tom, one thing that does trouble me, because, you know, I've had a wonderful life, and, you know, I'm a white guy who really hasn't experienced the adversity that comes with being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And I think trivial amounts of marijuana have been so devastating to so many communities When you allow that to happen, I think oftentimes selective reinforcement takes place. We have thousands of arrests every year uh, for trivial amounts of marijuana or for things like that, and yet we're not prosecuting rape cases. I think we need to let our peace officers do the important work uh, that they're doing and have been trained to do. There's a lot of dimensions of this topic that need to be discussed beyond just recreational marijuana. We need to be asking ourselves, what are the unintended consequences of what we've been doing? I think it's wonderful. I, I, now I like two politicians. What is wrong with my life? This is going to be a problem. It must be, be the marijuana. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> it must be the cannabis. You're absolutely right. I, I just like the fact that people can hear you and Senator Franzen speak in a very calm, very friendly manner, a knowledgeable uh uh, kind of explanation of what we really need to do. It's really good that you would come on the show uh, along with uh, Senator Franzen because people need to hear from politicians like you and Senator Franzen because you're you're even keel and there's not a whole lot of that watching Fox or CNN. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. God, it's, it's tough to do. You need to come on more often. So does uh, Senator Franzen. So if I have any political questions at all, you're going to have to get up early. I get up usually about 4.30 in the morning, so, Tom, I'd be available anytime. 
You're a good man. And by the way, stop with the silence in the car, Buster. Tune into KQRS. <laughs> All, <laughs> All right. right. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Senator. And Dr. Dr. Scott Jensen.